Hello everyone, welcome to the Star Wars podcast on the Yavni YouTube channel. I'm your host, Benji Max, featuring Josh Slade and Reese Chay. Hi. Today we'll be discussing the prequels. That includes The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. Let's get into it. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Okay. So, we should start with The Phantom Menace. Yes. Which characters are introduced in The Phantom Menace that are, play a pivotal role in the Star Wars universe? So, first we are introduced to Anakin as a child, and we find that his chlorian count is higher than Yoda, predicting a prophecy is true, that he was a chosen one. Um, there was also Darth Maul, who was Emperor Palpatine's um, apprentice, and... He killed Qui-Gon, but Obi-Wan revenged his death, death by cutting him in half and falling, pushing him into like a rubbish pit. Awesome. Reese, in The Phantom Menace, we are originally led to believe that's the death of Darth Maul. When do we find out that he's still alive? Um, I believe we find it back in the Clone Wars, and he's mm. just terrorising all of the operations, mm. and he doesn't stand on a side. He's all for his own... Objectives. Well, when when he's thrown down the pit in the Phantom Menace, what keeps him alive is his hatred for Obi Wan, and that's his main goal. He's he lives on spider legs, right? And wha- then when um, Savage Press finds him, he's repaired by the Dathomirians. So mm. yeah, okay. My question is. There is a mental aspect of how he survived, like with all his hatred, but the physical aspect of it, right? He fell into an endless pit, right? In you, d- you didn't see, you didn't see the bottom, and he survived all by himself, especially well, already cut in half. Yeah, that we know. He's probably bleeding out. He's fallen three hundred meters, no stopping. And I just want to know, like, <coughs> how how can you survive that? Even, even like through a mental aspect of that, with, with his hatred, but I don't think any human being, including Jedi, Sith, anyone, they could not survive that. Well, I'm sure part of the reason why he survived was the intense training he endured as a child from Emperor Palpatine, and I'm sure he was put through torturous training sessions and everything, which strengthened his mind to such a place where he could survive, just based on hatred. I think that's how he survived. He persevered and. I also think that, like, the surprising part of it all was Obi-Wan, a young, unexperienced apprentice. I think his first duel mm-hmm. ever with Darth Maul, an uh, experienced, confident Sith, much more powerful than it, most Jedis. Um, and Obi-Wan gets to split him in half through all the doubt yeah. that we thought. Well, I think a reason why Obi-Wan did so well is because... He just witnessed the death of his master. Quite and good that, like, sadness and rage. Yeah. And I think he used Maul's maybe overconfidence to his advantage. Yeah, I agree. I remember watching this um, Star Wars theory, how Obi-Wan, ha- ha- he, like, hanging on a light, yeah. right, about to fall, and he's getting, like, embarrassed. Yeah. Darth Maul... Just spraying sparks onto his hands. Right. I think that could lead Darth Maul, like, he was a bit, like, off guard. He thought he's won this battle, this unexperienced apprentice that he's never heard of. And especially the fact that he killed, like, hundreds of Jedis in the past and people. Yeah, for sure. He was overconfident and that's what led him to his fall. And also what makes him more surprising is, if you've read canon before, you know that Obi-Wan was behind his class at the Jedi Temple, which makes it even more amazing and pressing, impressive that he was able to defeat a Sith assassin. He actually wasn't a Sith Lord yet, but he was labelled as a Sith assassin. Okay, I think that's wrapped up. Phantom, Phantom Apprentice. Menace. Phantom Menace. So I think we should bring it on to Attack of the Clones. Um, yep. Reese, can you, can you identify some of the controversies surrounding Anakin and Padme, who's the senator of Naboo during The Phantom Menace. Can you identify some of the controversy surrounding their relationship on Naboo? So, Attack of the Clones kind of 
builds up the rest of the story to everything that goes down and Anakin turning to the dark side. And I think his relationship with Padme and all of the lies that Palpatine gave him, all of these little, like, bending the truth a little bit, really, like, changed his perspective on who were the good guys. Also, I feel like the Clone Wars, which of course led to Order 66, the death of all the Jedis, I thought that, especially since Obi-Wan went to um, Kamino, um, he went to the Prime Minister and started talking, um, and then we find later that before Order 66 that it was all a trap by Yoda, seeing the dark side of it and the p- evil plan that Emperor Palpatine was trying to force on the Jedis. Um, I feel like that the Jedis, they should have saw, like foreseen this as well. It was especially as in the Clone Wars as well, there was Fives, do you remember the clone, Fives? He, mm-hmm. he saw this, that there was a chip in the clone's brain that made them, like, under one word, just yeah. simply, like, get brainwashed. And before he could say anything about it, he was... He was Shot. Yeah. yeah. Like, surely the Jedis should have, like, suspected something. That, like, why would they kill Fives? They would shoot on sight. Another brother of theirs, just so... Because he was committing crime. Yeah. He should have gone to court. He could have been prosecuted, anything. But they choose to shoot him. Surely... Especially Anakin was there when Fives died. Mm-hmm. Anakin should have saw it, like seen this. Um, he should have surely brought this up. Like they, it was like on the Jedi's mind for a bit. But um, after that, they for sure just left it. They dropped it until Revenge of the Sith, where Order sixty six occurred. So I think there's something very special about the Clone Wars. So when you're introduced to the clones and the Grand Clone Army of the Republic in Attack of the Clones. You just think that they're the army. You have no like emotional connection towards them. But in the Clone Wars, you get to create like an emotional relationship with them. For example, Rex. Everyone loved Rex by the end. All the Star Wars fan base loved Rex. And everyone, when we when we saw him in a later f- in a later TV series called Rebels, everyone was like, "Oh, cool, it's Rex." And we also it also made us feel empathetic towards them for the situation that they were going through while being blindsided, like, without even knowing it. And um, d- at, during the last episode of The Clone Wars, when all the when it's ex- when Order 66 is executed, we see that Rex fights it as much as he can compared to all the other clones. Mm, but he, I, he was still kind of... He you can see in The Clone turned. Wars, he was still under the trap yeah. and he was still yeah, he going to do it. Cause that's because he had the chip. Yeah. But, like, you could see how how long and how torturous it was for him to change compared to all the other clones who just dropped their helmets and started blasting. Mm. And I think that really speaks to the emotional connections that we've that he's gained along the way during the Clone Wars series with Ahsoka, with Anakin, and with Obi-Wan. And I think it's really special. I'd just like to say, like, when he first, when Emperor Palpatine t- told him that it's time, it's Order 66 has begun, he pulled out his things, his guns, out of his holsters, and he's like, fight him. And he, I think he was talking about fives, because he was ta- telling T-Rex, t- t- he was telling Rex, not T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. He was, he was telling, he was telling Rex. Although his name should have been T-Rex, it's a pretty cool name. Yeah, not gonna lie. But um, he, he, he told, like, he was saying, fight him, fight him, like, don't listen to him. And it was true. They should have, they sh- it was just too late. Rex saw it. But it was just too late as soon as Order 66 began. But the fact that he said fight him, I thought that he knew this before. He knew that this was coming, right? But no other clone saw this. So I would, I think that Rex, he definitely saw what was happening. He definitely saw that this was coming. But I just want to know why was this not let out? Why would at least one clone, one, would decide that their emotion, their passion for the Jedi, for the Republic would make them tell the Jedi that, hold on, something's r- wrong, right? There's a chip planted in our head that will make us go, will backfire on you, right? And I just think that how can the Jedi just let this go? How can the how can the clones not tell any Jedi? How can the Jedi, like, foresee this? Well, 
I think that speaks to the excellence of Palpatine's plan mm. and how he masked his Sith, his Sith presence from the Jedi. I think he also masked the whole Order 66 execution from all of them to keep him under wraps until it was let out when he knew Anakin was going to turn. Every uh, piece, even playing both sides of the war, he yeah. he was behind, he was the leader to both the Separatist and the Republic armies, yeah. all part of his plan to become the Empire, um, the, the Emperor of the galaxy. Can I just say, how awesome are the droids in the Clone Wars? Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, I love it. They're, they're just, they're so much fun. It just adds that comedic element to such a, an emotional story that's mm. going on. It's really yeah. handled. In so depth. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. Um, I feel like as well, back to Clone Wars, we were Sorry. going a bit off topic <laughs> to later on, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Um, I feel like in the Clone Wars, when the battle on Geonosis begun, yeah. the clones arrived wouldn't you think that, like, all th- when all the Jedi showed up to the Geonosis Stadium mm. where Anakin and Obi-Wan and Padme were fighting these horrible creatures, I feel like that when they sent all the Jedi, wouldn't you think that's a bit, like, reckless? Like, they didn't see, like, once if they lost, once if that looked like most of their Jedi that were there, all their Jedi Knights and Jedi Masters, right? Why would they send every single one of them there just for three people? I don't I do not understand that. Well, I think I think it's because it also plays to the fact that Anakin they believe that Anakin was the chosen one and would bring balance to the force and also they knew that a key part to Anakin reaching his full potential was Obi Wan and his tutelage. So basically so I think there was a really important thing to have him safe and secured. I also think it might have been, with all of the clones there, it might have been part of Palpatine's idea because he needs Anakin alive yeah. for his master plan. Yeah. Well, just remember, it was Count Dooku that was there on Geonosis. Palpatine was taking care of the Republic. Right, I think this was Dooku's plan. Um, I did not think that Palpatine saw this. I think that Palpatine just thought Dooku was just expendable and yeah. his life didn't matter. I agree with Reese. Yeah, as shown in early Revenge of the Sith, Anakin, like you saw Count Dooku's face just looking at Palpatine saying, mate, I'm your master. Like, I'm your apprentice. Like, why would you do that? Don't you think, like, m- okay, moving on to Revenge of the Sith now, don't you think when there were, when Dooku's head was about to get chopped off, don't you think if he was alive for two seconds more, he would have told Anakin and Obi-Wan about Palpatine. He definitely had the chance to. I feel like I that... he was just in shock. I think he was just in shock for that two seconds. Like, why aren't you saving me? I'm, I'm supposed to be a loyal apprentice. And I feel like that um, he thought that his death would lead to a much bigger death. Like, he knew that Anakin, he felt his hatred inside of him, shown in an attack of the clones. He told Anakin, I, f- I f- feel this hatred inside of you. Um, it's shown when he kills the women and the children and the men mm. for killing his mother, Shmi. Exactly. So I feel like that Count Dooku saw what was going to happen with Anakin, with the Jedi, the Jedi Order with the Republic, it's the first empire ever. And obviously Dooku was like, my death will be for a bigger cause. So I feel like that he could have been more selfish, like every other Sith would only take care of themselves. Um, but yet again, he knew that he wanted the Republic to fall and the Jedi Order. So he, like, embraced it and accepted it. Mm. Yeah. So, um, I feel like as well, what was disturbing in Revenge of the Sith was how Anakin, after he killed, like, after Padme, he found out Padme was dead. He knew that there was no point being being with the Sith, right? Because his main cause of being with the Sith was he, they thought that Padme was going to die in, well, the prophecy was that Padme was going to die through birth. Um, so he was going to go to the Sith just to save Padme, correct? But once he figured out Padme died, he still why, stayed. why would he still say, like, stay as a Sith? Well, 
I think it was masked by hatred for the Jedi for what they had done and how they had the chance to say Padme and didn't and how he, he was restricted from acknowledging that he was married and having a child with Padme and how he couldn't say it. And once he went to the Sith and realised he could learn all of the power that the Jedi were hiding from him, I think he, f- too, he fell in love with it and realised this could be my full potential. I could be the strongest Anakin Skywalker there is. Mm. Um, I feel like as well that Anakin, he figured out Luke was his father and he wanted Luke to join him. Yeah. So, well, Leia secretly was also a Force user, had a lot of midichlorians, um, had the ability to use the Force and foresee things. Mm. Um, wouldn't you think that Anakin, well, now Darth Vader, would realise that he's got children out there who you, that would live up to him if he returned to them, right? Yeah. Because, like, later on he says, he agrees with Luke, saying that he's right, he should have returned to being a Jedi. But it was a bit too late because, you know, he got burnt. Yeah. Um, I just feel like all this is all delayed, right? Like, the Jedi's foreseeing things. It's all delayed until the last minute, right? Rex, um, now Darth Vader, you know? All of this is a bit delayed, and only if it was shown a bit later, this story would be a whole lot different. Yeah, I think the whole point of the prequels was to lead up to the climax of Revenge of the Sith, where Anakin becomes Darth Vader. Kind of the story building, the lead up to it. Yeah, and then it goes into the originals. So now that we've covered the content base... Of the prequels. I'd like to discuss something that's very controversial in the prequels, which is the acting and the dialogue. So, I can give you a few examples. For example, um, when Anakin and Obi-Wan are having their final fight with Mustafar, and Obi-Wan on the panel in the, in the middle of the fire is trying to convince Anakin to go back to the Sith, to the Jedi, sorry. Mm-hmm. He... Um, his language is, in my opinion, the Jedi are evil. And don't you think they could have worded that way better than what they did? What instead of making mean? it so awkward and just really makes you sh- kind of like shake in your skin a bit. In my opinion, the Jedi are evil. Like that. Um, I feel like that. Well, he's like, in my opinion, the Jedi are evil. Well... I feel like that would be a bit awkward for the viewers out there because basically, wait, so like, what do you mean that they could have scripted like, it better? Like they could have said, um, like he just could have said something a bit more in the moment, like something with a bit more passion than a simple, in my opinion, a generic, in my opinion, the Jedi evil, which you just say in a debate or something, yeah. not in this heated life or death situation. And also, in Attack of the Clones, just the awkwardness between Padme and Anakin on Naboo when Anakin's expressing his love to her and he's like, the sand's so coarse, rough, and it gets everywhere. I'm like, Unlike you. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't make anyone feel like, oh, that's sweet. It's just really uncomfortable. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it should have been... I don't like sand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it at all. Yeah. It's just, I feel like that part as well, it showed how irritated he got with everything, you know, from that sand. Like, right, he got so irritated and just showed how much anger was actually inside him, like how much depth was inside of him, you know. Um, Yeah, so that's all. Yeah. Well, that's what we have time for today. Um, I think we covered most of the prequels and everything. So... <coughs> Join us back soon for the discussion of the originals and the rebels. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.